Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder and I'm with my co-host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by Autoclose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, introduce today's guest and maybe what we will be talking about today? Yeah, it's been a while since it was both of us and been a while since we had a guest and being both of us. So it's good to be back to normal. But today we actually have a recommendation from one of our teams. So shout out to Brana for recommending today's guest, Nikki. Good to meet you, sir. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Likewise. Uh, do, doing good. Just came from a run. And uh, if you're going to make my introduction, I'm really looking forward to how you'll pronounce my last <laughs> last name. <laughs> Well, let's both I didn't give it want a to try. do you a I'll, disservice. Oh, you, you go first and I'll go second. We'll see who's closer. You go. All right. Uh, I'm going for Vinograd- <laughs> Vinogradov. Not bad. Terrible. No, that was like... I'll do... I'll take it. I'll take it. Go on hand. then, Sean. <laughs> oh, well, then you're giving me a... Hey, okay, well then... Vinogradov. Is that echo in here? One bit, only one this time. Oh... Okay, well, Nikki, why don't you tell us a little bit what you know, what you do, what your company does, and then we'll get to, we'll get going from there. Right. So uh, I'm at the moment still going solo, but I help business owners and leaders, especially on the level of well, on quite a deep level of how their mind functions. But not just on that level, but how can they actually really perform on a high level without stress in their team, at home, in every area of your every in every area of their life and and uh because that's where my background is i used to live in buddhist meditation centers i've meditated for 15 years and i'm also neuroscience based professional coach so i did 180 hours of training and passed all the tests and then i have led teams for 10 years so i kind of put all that together when it comes to when i work with people Got it. So, so just to jump in, so do you help business owners with that? Because I'll tell you this much: I must, I stress a lot. So, uh, mm. I I can probably use use some help. But I will tell you some few things that I have changed recently. Um, breathing is one, and doing a lot of. Mm. I've been doing. Uh, I did a little cryo, like a kind of going into like a cold freezer for three minutes um, early yeah. in the morning to try and help my body recover and stuff like that. So are those stuff that you recommend is breathing? I heard cold showers in the morning is another good one, but I'd love to get yes. your input on what helps uh, reduce that early morning stress. Yeah. I, yeah. I kind of approach it always with clients from three perspectives. One is physical, like what you're eating, uh, the cold showers. And then it's really, how do we actually, how does the person actually perceive the world? What, are, what are the ways that, how are they thinking in the way that creates a lot of stress and how to think differently? And then it's, let's say, the meditation, the breathing aspect of things. So I work from those three. And um, there's a lot of work because according to World Health Organization, 77% of adult population live under stress that already has physical symptoms. So, And the funny thing is that the first thing that I always need to do with clients is to... I cannot give them tools because they will not use them if they are very stressed. So first thing is to kind of like humbly step back, which I definitely didn't expect when I started uh, in this business and in my profession that the first thing that I need to do with business owners is to get them to stop for a while. Getting them to stop for a while, I bet that's difficult. But there was one thing I wanted to ask you then. As soon as you said meditation, I thought of this. Um, I've always found... Mm. I. I'm not a great sleeper. I I find it quite difficult mm. to get off to sleep. My mind's always on. I'm always thinking of a work idea. Something happens. I find now that if I listen to a podcast and if it's loud enough that it consumes my attention, that actually really helps. But if it's too quiet, I can still think and it's still bubbling underneath the surface. How much for people that you work with is sleep a problem? Because obviously, if you're working hard, you've got long hours, you've got stresses and big decisions and people to be worried about that's going to wear on your mind. But obviously, if you sleep well, it's going to make a massive difference to your performance. So yes. is that part of what you're helping them out with? And, yeah. and what kind of things can you tell me to do? But probably Sean has this too. Yeah, big part. When I started, again, I didn't expect, I didn't realize how many people have problems with sleeping. Like people sleep poorly between like five to max seven hours. And one of the first things, again, approaching it from 
physical point of view, but that's a bit less interesting. So from the let's say from the point of view of mind, one of the things is that I found with uh, people is that well, what are they actually thinking? Why is there so much stuff going on? And the main reason for that is is the part of our brain is all the time kind of like, hey, look at this. Hey, look at this. This might be a problem. And because most of us approach it that we kind of try to avoid it, like I, I don't want to think and we try to we force ourselves to calm down, actually the noise gets even louder because it's the function of the brain to say, Oli, this might be important. Have a look at this. So one of the things that I ask my clients to do is before they go to sleep or in the evening, it's just sit down for a while, look at the three most important things to do during the next day and to visualize, like see yourself actually kind of doing them or write them down. And they are really surprised that how much it helps because what it does to the brain is that the brain finally goes, all right, I was listened to. Now this is kind of out of control. I don't need to nag anymore. So that's, I could say many things, but that's the most useful. It's like five minutes. I think this is a great episode for business owners, Ali. You know, we, all of us do stress. And I actually want to tell you about a, a diagram my wife showed me because I do stress a lot. She showed me it last week. Mm-hmm. And it was like a diagram with a big circle and shows this is what you stress about. And then there's a little circle in that big circle that says, this is actually the stuff that actually comes true out of all the stress. So mm-hmm. you stress about a hundred things all the time, but out of those hundred things, only one or two things end up becoming, you know, it, it could be from, for example, me, you know, you know, my daughter, for example, has COVID right now. And, you know, me stressing mm-hmm. about her fever, me stressing about, oh, if her fever gets too high. And if this goes too high, and if her cough gets worse, and you think about all these different things that you stress about, and you, you blow your mind up, but then you realize like two days yes. later, like 99% of that didn't happen. But I will say just on that, you're only human, so we all have to do that. But if you didn't have that, you would like miss obvious threats and you can't just notice every big Agreed. one problem being one big threat because none of them transpire yeah. into being a real problem in the end sometimes. But I know what you mean. It's still painful up here though to live through it. Yeah, so I'll, I, of course I would go, I don't want to go too much on the sidetrack with that. But one of the main things with uh, stress is that, well, my, one could do many things, but if we can have more dopamine, and dopamine is a, it's not a, there's this myth that when you check your phone, you get a dopamine hit, but actually you get dopamine because you're anticipating something important to happen. And why am I saying this is that more conscious we are of why are we, why am I actually doing this work? Why do I want to build my business? More dopamine we have when we do the things, and why is this important? is because dopamine blocks the most negative impact of stress. So dopamine is actually a blocker for uh, stress. And there's many other things I could, I could go into. Like we can also shrink how much our mind goes into what can go wrong. So, but I, could, I can talk more about that if you want. But how do I get my clients is, well, when I started, funny thing, well, it wasn't really funny, but I started a week before COVID. And my network was mainly in travel business. So you can imagine what happened at the first months of my business, like pretty much all my business was out. So I really went full on at LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is my main source where I do marketing. But in this business, in, in coaching, about 70% of clients are referrals. That's why it takes a while to build it up. 80% of coaches quit in their first 12 to 18 months. So 60% of my clients are referrals and 40% comes directly through LinkedIn. Got it. And, uh, and currently, um, so do you host like, um, like webinars, events, Zoom meetings, one-on-one, or how do you kind of, right. how do you kind right. of right. You know, scale yes. your own business? Yes. So from LinkedIn, of course, that's top part of the funnel. People get into my newsletter and use it from news- <coughs> newsletters. <clears throat> excuse me, people come to my, I have a weekly 30 minute kind of 3.0 focus session. I have workshops, but that's how it kind of linked in newsletter workshops. And then they actually come to my course or the one-on-one work. I, I prefer to focus on making few things work really well before I go into like 
in the many different things. Love it. I've got a question for you. You are, you may have just seen me sipping my coffee. It's decaf. Um, I've got a thing mm-hmm. in my brain at the moment where I don't drink caffeinated coffee. I've been reading about it. And I'm hearing that if you have a coffee at, uh, let's say, noon, it can last in your system for about 12 hours. And like I said, I, I'm a bad sleeper. I don't want caffeine in my system at midnight. Not good for sleep, is it? Is there anything that um, I'm going to address the stigma a little bit? Everyone's like obsessed with coffee, especially in business. It's, mm. you know, coffee is for closers. Why? Everyone's sitting there with mm-hmm. Starbucks like Sean is right now. It's all the time and everyone, and particularly if you're stressed or if you want to work hard, you're going to get up early maybe. You're going to have caffeine to help you concentrate. It goes hand in hand. Do you Mm -hmm. have a stance on that? Do you have a for or against or a recommendation for people? Because I think we've taken it way too far. We're crutching on it too bad. Yeah, crutching, exactly. Crutching on it is I have no moral opinion whether it's bad or good. Like just from the neuroscience point of view, for example, if we... If we have coffee first thing in the morning and we slept poorly, then what happens is our brain blocks the hormones that will make us tired. And then what happens when the caffeine wears off is all the hormones get back in the brain and people, they just crash during the middle of the day. And basically, just like you said, caffeine, there's no way around it. It has big impact on the quality of our sleep. So just from the science perspective, and there's good ways to use it. If we have coffee 90 minutes after we have woken up, we have drunk a lot of water, maybe we had some lemon, then the negative effects of caffeine are a lot less. But I have coffee, for example, in the morning, 90 minutes after I wake up. It's good to think about think about it as a cherry on top of the cake. But if we have it as a cake, then we might be in trouble. So what's next uh, for the business? How big do you want to grow it? Um, any big plans? Um, and, and FYI, on a yeah. side note, if I'd like to be added to your newsletter so I can start receiving your information and your content. Sure. Sure. So, um, sure. Uh, so my next, next big thing is literally on 21st of April, I'm launching my 3.0 Focus cor- course. And I only got my first 10 clients on it. And that's what I'm really looking to take into where I'm really going to start making a lot of money. My first goal is the hundred hundred K and I'm, I'm writing a book. Um, so right now that's my, like I look at things usually in four year cycles. Now I have pretty good client, the client base. Now I can, um, expand through the course but I, I do want to grow into big bigger to have events and and so on perfect well listen uh nikki thank you so much for joining us today this has been a blast and thank you for everybody listening um if you enjoyed the show don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from but before i'm done um i want you to let the crowd know and the audience know and everyone listening where they can find you and where they can maybe join your newsletter because this is a very unique uh, um, episode today, and I think it's really good for business owners. So maybe just let everyone know where they can find you, and um, and also uh, join your newsletter. Yes, so the best place to find me is LinkedIn. I post there really valuable content every single day, and from there it's easy to find the newsletter. And it's neuroscience based, uh, really. What would I say? Practical tools to use, but also from fifteen years of meditation experience. That all that combined into the newsletter perfect and one last question how do you uh self-educate yourself are you reading many books listening to podcasts yeah i i listen to a lot of podcasts so i run every day about one hour or a bit more and i listen a podcast during that time and i'm i love learning so it's not a forced thing so i'm continuously of course discovering more about my mind reading neuroscience but i'm reading listening everything perfect well thank you so much for joining us nikki uh this has been a lot of fun ollie thanks for putting this together and until next time everybody see you soon